day. Let me explain. Sun shining, skies are blue. Just standing out the back of the chateau near the part here. I'm just on my way to show everyone the site for the new job. Let's have a look. So this little building here is out the back of the Jeet or the guest house here and the connecting honeymoon suite which is in there <coughs> that way through to the garden and that's just the neighbor's property but this is the building i'm working on first of all there's a, there are four windows one two three four i'll show you inside soon that i need to uh rebuild because as you can tell and you'll see more inside those ones have seen better days and then as a bit of an add-on to this one, i just got to fix up and give this door a little bit of a facelift. So let's go inside and have a look. The other thing that needs to happen in here, that wall's got to come down, which won't be too difficult. It's just got a bit of power in there, which we will deal with at the time. But as you can see, these windows are shot to get a reasonable price and a reasonable lead time on windows in this country seems nearly near impossible for some tasks and some jobs. So yeah, I'm happy to step in and take the reins for this one, considering um, my past with windows and doors. So yeah, as you can see, these are yeah, well past their use by date. So I've got some uh, timber up in the garage that I will show you that I bought last weekend um, that we're going to make the frames out of and effectively what it's going to be is once that wall comes out this is the back room this will be a fixed panel window so a new frame with a piece of glass then I've got some a new frame with some recycled sashes which is similar style to these ones but a little bit different as you'll see and then I've got another fixed panel here and then another recycled sash window there but all four need new frames for these windows so let's walk back up to the shed and uh we'll have a bit of a look at what we're working with while we're here though we'll uh jump through and have a quick look at the garden from a distance i'll just extend my amazing little pole up there you can see the walled garden here so we're back up in the garage slash workshop and it's probably time we talk about a little bit of a plan for this job. It's always good to have a plan. So let's do it. So this is what we're working with. On the left, Exhibit A, is the Douglas fir I picked up on the weekend to make the window frames out of. This material is 100 mil wide, 28 mil thick, and 2.5 meters long. Ideally, I wanted 50 by 50 mil sections but it was very difficult to get that unless I was buying in bulk and this is not considered a bulk order. So I picked it up from the hardware store and given my history with windows and making things work, I said, I'll make it work. So that is that. On the right, exhibit B, are the four window sashes, which will constitute two of the French window frames, the other two being the fixed panel window frames. These sashes were recycled out of the first floor of the chateau on the front face when all the windows got replaced to UPVC. And I would assume that the others were so far gone, kind of like the ones we saw earlier that I'm now replacing, that they couldn't be salvaged and needed to be thrown out. So where possible, I'm always a believer of recycling what I can. And these ones are well and truly more than recyclable. So I'll just have to give them a bit of a facelift at the same time. There's a, two pieces of glass that I need to order for those as well. So once they're all done, cut back, sanded, painted, reglazed, they should be just fine. 
Okay, so generally speaking, when fitting windows, you would measure the opening on the building and then custom make your windows to that size. In this case, it's a bit different. I've got existing sashes that do fit into the opening, but they are a bit smaller. So I do need to make the sashes to fit around the window frame as opposed to the opening. In this case, it means that there's gonna be a gap between the window frame and the brick opening, which I can easily infill and then just trim back to the brick reveal on the outside or whatever is happening on the inside. So that'll work. With the fixed panel glass, I'll make those exactly the same size and then afterwards just measure the glass to order and then I can come and just retrofit the glass into those openings once it's ready. So the other thing this does is it gives symmetry across all four window frames across the entire wall because who doesn't love a bit of symmetry? It's very satisfying. And best of all, it looks good too. So first job is cut some window frames to fit around these sashes, bearing in mind there needs to be a small tolerance around the frame between the outside of the sash, I can't point, outside of the sash and the actual window frame itself. So a tolerance of maybe three to five millimeters. So let's do it. So just got one set of French windows out here. All I need to do now is line them up perfectly as if they were closed so I can get an accurate perimeter measurement around to cut the window frame. So because the windows are so old, the measurements on the top or the bottom and the top are not exact. So what I'm trying to do is just find the middle ground. In this case, I've got to allow for the tolerance between the actual sash and the window frame, maybe between five and 10 millimeters, just so you can spread the same gap here as you can down the other end. Bear in mind, I need to run the bottom part of the window frame and the top past here by the thickness of the jam on the side. So it'll all make sense soon. Okay, so to explain the configuration of the window frames, you've got sash one, sash two. The way they work is you need to run the bottom one through and the top one through past the edge of the sash on top and bottom wide enough to accept this one to, to butt up into it there and butt down into it there. And that'll be the jam on that side and that'll be the jam on that side. So then we screw from underneath, underneath and top and top in there. So that's how it would go, all go together. So when you're doing this, you've got to allow the thickness, the overall width of the sash plus the thickness of this material, plus the tolerance between the actual frame or the jam and the window sash. So in this case, I've allowed maybe three mil gap between the frame and the sash, the frame and the, or the frame and the sash. So I've got to allow enough to run past that, which is in this case, 28 mil, um, the thickness of the material and the thickness of the material there. And then that way, when this comes down, this end will butt nicely into that corner. Again, it will make more sense soon. So this, my friends, is a fine current example of what I'm trying to achieve with these new window frames. So these are on the back face of the chateau, looking out at the lovely jeet over there and another outbuilding with the boiler room 
some other room that gets you up to that area and there's a middle room which I've been doing the barn doors on and then La Chapelle in the end there and then the lovely parterre in the foreground anyway I digress back to the windows so this is exactly the same as what I'm trying to achieve with these new window frames and you can see the sill detail and the, the width of that isn't much at all but this sort of section here tucks into this channel along there and then when it's closed if I can just move this chair out of the way you can see it tucks right in behind and leaves no gap at all so yeah and then we've got the sill and then that runs over the top to create that kind of detail so very nice very well designed so that's what we're going for the other thing to note is the gap between the frame and the sash these are quite old so the gap varies around the whole thing and the thing is you've got to allow for paint as well so there's always those extra little layers that make all the difference in the end and obviously you have to paint it for protection as well um, which has to be a consideration when you're allowing for this tolerance gap here so the overall width of the window jams or window frames is 50 mil these boards are 100 i've cut them to length i've just got to rip them to width now so i've already done the bottom and the top which gives me two window frames out of one length of board effectively um, because i'm ripping it in half now i've just got to do the sides So a little efficiency tip uh, when cutting wood and you get it off the rack or from the timber mill often the end isn't square so first of all make it square on the drop saw then if you've already cut a piece you know the right length instead of pulling out your tape every time just put the piece you've already cut that you know is the right length on top of the piece you're about to cut flush it at the end that you've just squared and then mark the other end and make your cut Hey guys, so over here we have frame one, frame two, frame three. Over here we have frame four. What I've done though, is I've switched over the sashes. So this is the second set of sashes. The reason I did that is because as much as they look the same, there can be a slight discrepancy in size. So I thought I'd get these up on the table, remeasure and make sure that these last two that I've cut are the right size. As it turns out, they need a little bit of a trim, so we'll go and do that now. Okay, so they're all cut now. This last one's been trimmed and marked. There's a slight discrepancy there, but I've got effectively the four frames. Panel. And look at this weather. A little bit breezy, a little bit cold, actually very cold, but if it weren't for the sun, I don't know where I'd be right now. Probably in, inside and not doing this, that's for sure. So I know that this set here is for this window here. If you remember when we went upstairs and looked at the frames on the ones that are still in the house, you've got this little detail. There's the outside face and this little lip tucks in to a channel that I spoke about on the actual side jam on the other side too and this side. So to make life easier, I'm gonna cut out that channel now because it'll save a lot of heartache later okay right before we 
put together the frames with the sashes. I'm going to put together the frames for the fixed panel glass, which doesn't really matter. There's no prep work to do to these, no routing, no anything. So I'm just going to set it up on this table, which is slightly too small, but that's okay. I can make it work. Comes with a factory bevel on here. I don't know why, but it does. So I'm just going to pull those the right way up so it works. And then we can assemble the frame. So that's all done. The way we're looking at it now is how it would be. That's the bottom, that's the top, that's the top. And as you can see, the bottom of the frame runs through and the top one, or the side jam, sits on top. Same there and up the top as well. So I've just put these corner brackets on just to brace it all so that when we transport it across, it just helps with making sure it all stays secure and in one piece. So just out here putting together the second frame for the fixed panel glass and let's quickly talk about the fixing method for the corner. All I'm doing is using this sort of like liquid nails glue. I'm putting it on that face there and then I'm screwing through there with two screws uh, like this screws are hanging out a bit because it doesn't matter because there's going to be packers underneath here anyway around the whole frame so it doesn't really matter if they're sticking out and the more i drive them in even though i pre-drill them because they're so close to the end grain they can you can see be close to well, blowing out the end grain of the wood so there's no need to drive them in when you've already got glue drive them in flush when you've already got glue in there because effectively in time, once that goes off, you can probably take those out and they'll be fine anyway. But by that stage, they will be installed. So not to worry. The other thing that's worth mentioning about these screws sitting proud of the timber here is that in this application, there's no need for me to get them flush. But if the application required you to get it flush, all you would do is just, even though you're close to the edge, you would just get a countersink um, drill bit. And then when you drill it in, you countersink a little bit into the actual wood so that when you screw, put the screw in, it ends up flush with the actual surface of the timber. Each day, this makes me sad. 